Second Chronicles chapter 16. We're studying the life of Asa. And we come to a remarkable passage here. Something to be learned. And it says, In the sixth and thirtieth year of the reign of Asa, Basha, king of Israel, came up against Dru Judah and built Ramoth to intent that he might let none go out or come into Asa, king of Judah. Okay, now here we go again. We got we got two nations. We got Israel up north. We got Judah down south. Basha is the king of Israel. Israel always does wrong, has not gotten right. Asa, who's been doing right, who has the priest, who has Jerusalem, has the temple, has been doing right. Now Israel comes up, and we've read in the last few chapters about peace and, and rest during, uh, during the time of Asa, how he brought the nation to serve God and do right. And guess what? When you read these times in Chronicles, when you, as we go through the book of Chronicles, pay attention to when people get right with the Lord. Because guess what's going to happen? They're going to be attacked. And here Asa gets attacked by his own family, by his own uh, Isaac, Jacob, and uh, the 12 tribes. The Bible says, Paul writes, Yea, all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Listen, you know why Christians don't take a stand? Because they know as soon as they take a stand for the Bible, the devil's going to try to kick them down. And the more you stand, the more the devil is going to try to kick your feet out and put you back on the ground. You know what's unusual about the warfare of a Christian? In World War I and World War II, they built trenches. You stay in those trenches and you fire from those trenches. Well, in the Bible, as God's given us armor, according to, uh, according to Paul's writing to the Ephesian church, as he's given armor, we're the only ones called to stand in the battlefield. So Asa takes a stand. He cleans up the, the nation. He gets things right in chapter 16. Here comes the end of the feet. Here comes the time of Lucifer. Here comes the time of Satan coming. And again, it comes in the form of his own family, the tribes of Israel. And what, uh, what Basha is doing is he built Ramah. He builds his place. He builds his to stop Israel from going down to Jerusalem. Now, why would they want to do that? Because if they get down to the proper place where God is, if they get to the right Levites, if they get to the right priests of Aaron, maybe they'll learn the truth. Maybe they'll realize, hey, you know what? Israel's doing wrong, and we can't fellowship with that. And there's a church out there that will keep the Bible shut from you, especially during the Dark Ages, when no one had an idea what's going on because the Bible was shut. And it's funny because when you look at the churches of Dark Ages, you had six, seven churches that claimed to have the bones of John the Baptist, the head of John the Baptist. And you say, well, how can six churches claim to have the head of John the Baptist? They never traveled like we did. They usually stayed home. They didn't have airplanes and trains and automobiles. So they didn't know what was going on in another country. They didn't know what was going on in another church. That's what happens when you have a closed Bible. You get the Dark Ages. America's closing the Bible. Guess what's coming up? I can tell you. Dark Ages. At least seven years. So Basha is trying to stop his people from going down and getting right. He knows there's a revival down in, in Judah. He knows King Asa is doing right. And he don't want the people to go down there. You know what the devil doesn't like? When you got a true heart and you want to serve God, the devil will stop you. The devil will try to prevent people from coming in your path. Especially if you have gospel tracts, especially if you have a Bible. If you're not serving God, if you're not doing right, the devil has no interest in you. You're already on his side. So when you do right and you try to be a witness, that's when the devil takes interest in you. Listen, even the devils in hell said, we know Paul. My question is for a Christian is, do the devils know you? Are you a threat to, the, to Satan? When you get up in the morning, does Satan have to rattle the, the, the devils to keep an eye on you? 
Then Asa brought out silver. Okay, now Asa starts to fall. We read in one battle with the Ethiopians, he called out the guys and said, God bless us. Help us. Now look what happens. Then Asa brought out silver and gold out of the treasures of the house of the Lord. And the king's house. Notice how the house of the Lord's first. He goes into the temple, he grabs gold and silver. That's God's. That's God's money. That's God's property. You know where I'm going with this one when I'm done. And the king's house. And his house. He took stuff out of the treasures. Probably stuff that came from his fathers. From his fathers going all the way back to David's. And sent to Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, that dwelt in Damascus, saying, There is a league between me and thee. As there was between my father and thy fathers. Behold, I have sent thee silver and gold. Go break thy lead with Basha, king of Israel, that he may depart from me. So he takes the Lord's money and uses it for worldly needs. He doesn't use it for trusting the Lord. He doesn't use it for the Lord's service. He uses it to buy somebody off. He goes up to Ben Haydad and says, Listen, I need your help. I'll give you money if you break off from King Basha and take my side. Well, let me tell you something. Whether it be a, a leader of a military, whether you be a, a, a leader of a nation, or if it's a friend of yours, or it's anybody that you know, if you can buy them off, somebody else can buy them off too. If he can buy him off to, to go against Basha, well, what would be the amount of money for Ben-Hadad to be paid to go against Asa? There's always a price. And once you take money, once you take a gift to, 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 uh, to be a help, well, somebody else can pay more money to be a help, and maybe against you for help. Ben-Hadad cannot be trusted. And he's not relying on God. We come a long way from the last chapter. We're in the middle of the battle of the Ethiopians. Lord, help us, help us. You say, what, what lesson do you get on that? Don't rely on old battles. Don't go in your Christian life and say, well, I did that back then. I'm going to do it today. I'm going to do it tomorrow. No, you're fooling yourself. You cannot survive on past victories. You got to be in the Word today. You got to have a prayer life today. You got to be in fellowship with God today. You can't rely on, oh, I used to go to church then, or I used to pray back then, or I used to do it back then. You can't do that. It's got to be today, it's got to be constant. Asa has fallen away from the Lord to rely on man. He's gone more in the world. And he's taking the Lord's treasures and he's using it for worldly needs instead of godly needs. There is a league between me and thee. And there was, a, was between my father and thy fathers. Alright, we had this compact, we had this agreement, we were friends. Behold, I have sent thee silver and gold. Well, there was a league between you and these people. Why would you need to pay them? And the thing is, what you got to learn with this now is, listen, you may have friends you think are friends, and they're not really friends. This guy thinks Bay had that is his friend, and you know, if I pay him money, well, what kind of friend is that? Just watch what happens. Behold, I have sent thee silver and gold. Go break thy league with Basha, king of Israel. So Ben Hadad had a friendship, had a league with, with Basha in Israel. This guy's a friend with everybody, and silver and gold is going to have him break a friendship with, with, him, with somebody being paid off. Well, that's not. This is not the kind of guy you want to have a friend in time of need. This is what Judas did. Oh, 30 pieces of silver? Thank you. I'll give you the time and place. It's interesting. And you need to realize in life, people will sell you out. It's nothing new under the sun. 
And he says, Break thy leave with Basha, king of Israel, that he may depart from me. In other words, get rid of him by paying him off. Why didn't he just pray like he did before? Why didn't he ask God? Listen, Israel was in the wrong. They've always been in the wrong. You don't tell me God would have, would have blessed Judah? He would have. And Ben Hadad hearkened unto King Asa and sent the captains of his armies against the cities of Israel. And they smote Ijon and Dan and Bel Menon and all the store cities of Nephtali. This is all up north. Well, let me ask you a question. While Ben Hadad, who's been paid by Asa, if he smokes his cities, do you think he killed people? Well, whose whose account is that now put on? Asa. I'm one of Asa's things. Well, if I pay you off, it won't it won't be accounted to me. I'll let you do the dirty work. Not in the eyes of God. Remember Jezebel and her husband. She has uh, Naboth killed. And God told Elijah, you better go down to that husband of hers, Ahab or Ahaz, I forget which one it is. You never get the two straightened out. He says, you go tell thou hast murdered for this land. Now, whereas if Asa, like the Ethiopian, if they were got in the battle, they would stand up, God would have got the victory. God would have done something. And God would have established the battle between the two cities. Now, like David, who hires... Joab to go kill Uriah. And it came to pass when Basha heard of it that he left off building Ramah and let his work cease. So he stops. We're in trouble. An army has invaded. Then Asa the king took all of Judah and they carried away the stones of Ramah and the temple thereof wherewith Basha was building and he built therewith Geba and Mizpah. So he takes this city that they were going to stop people from coming down south, worshiping the true God, and they build two cities. And you get Geba and Mizpah. And that tells you how much that Basha was going that they could build two, two cities from this one city. He was actively building. He was, he was a stronghold. He did not want Israel to go down south. Like the devil does not want his people to come become born-again Christians, he'll try anything he can to stop you from getting the gospel out. Don't you dare, don't you dare use God's money and use God's time to hire the world. And at that time, Hananiah, the seer, came to Asa the king of Judah. Well, this is all happened. Here comes God's prophet. Uh-oh. And said unto him, Because thou hast relied on the king of Syria, and not relied on the Lord thy God. Points to sin right out. Nails it right down. What do you say to people? Well, you don't point out sin. You don't name sin. Hananiah named it right down. He says, you didn't trust God. Nathan went up to David and said, thou art the man. Jesus at the well with the woman says, yeah, you don't have a husband. You have five of them. Paul told the Corinthian church, you got a guy in there committing fornication. Now, we don't go on the streets and point out cigarette smoking and, and you know, uh, two girls uh, hugging each other. We don't point out, we point out the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ. But from the pulpit, if you're dealing with somebody and with the scriptures, you tell them what their sin is. How can they be saved if you don't mention sin? Save from what? And not rely on the Lord thy God. Therefore, oh, there's a therefore that, okay, now that you've done this, there's a penalty. Therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thy hand. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. 
It says in verse 2, Ben Hadad, the king of Syria. In verse 7, the host of the king of Syria escaped out of that. You mean the Syrians were Israel's enemy? You mean he took God's money and gave it to the enemy? That never happens, does it? No, not in 2013. We don't take God's money and use it for the enemy, do we? No. Of course not. That's unthinkable. We wouldn't buy drums for our church. We wouldn't pay a missionary that doesn't do what God wants them to do. We wouldn't have somebody come into church and, and bring a perverted Bible. We wouldn't give perverted Bibles out to anybody in church. No. Of course not. We wouldn't buy programs and stuff like that that would hinder the gospel, and you think it will hinder the, it will be a blessing. No, we wouldn't do that. We wouldn't turn our money over to Satan. No. Never. Yeah. You believe that one? I got some property for you in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Were not the Ethiopians and the Lebanons a huge host? Yes, they were. With very many chariots and horsemen? Yes, they were. Last chapter. Yet because thou didst rely on the Lord, he delivered them into thy hand. Here, Hananiah brings up the past. He says, remember the Lord worked back then? Remember what the Lord did back then? Yeah. How come you didn't rely on that today? How come you not been in the Lord today? Why were you not the same man today that you were back then? You said, well, you're not supposed to go back in the past. No, you're not. As a born-again Christian, the Bible says you start off as a newborn babe. You are to work yourself to age. Asa should have never been like he was in, uh, in uh, chapter 14. Never. He should have been more. He should have grown in the Lord. He should have had more strength in the Lord. He should have went to the Lord and said, even before the battlefield, Lord, there's a problem. Lord, when, in chapter 14, we were in a battlefield. I prayed there. And Lord, we're not in the battlefield now, but you can prevent that battlefield. He could have been in prayer. He could have been in his Bible. He could have been in prayer. He could have been in fellowship with God. And he wasn't. You as a born-again Christian today are to be more grown in the Lord than yesterday. Yes. I'm going to say something. I don't mean no disregard. I understand there are children that are born with, with problems and defects. That's, that's beyond their comprehension. What I'm saying is, a born-again Christian does not grow, does not advance himself, does not stay tuned with God, <coughs> does not pray, does not have a better life than the day before. He is spiritually retarded. He has been ungrown, unraised. He's a retard in the Lord. And that is not because of a birth defect. That is because by choice. Asa has been retarded by choice. He has not grown in the Lord. Had he grown in the Lord, he would have been in prayer. And God would have taken care of Asa. And you know God would have. We don't rely on last week's victories. We don't rely on last month's victories or last year's or last decade victories. But we use them to be stronger today than we were back then. If God could have done it back then, man, he can do more today. If God got me through that then, wait to see what he can get through me now. But Asa did not do it like that. Asa went to man, trusted in man, trusted in the world. You get Christians today that they go out and banks and credit cards or friends, family, whoever, to help them out. Everything but the Lord. James says, you ask not, I mean, you receive not because you didn't ask. Until it's too late. Then you go to the Lord. Hey, I'm preaching myself. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the world, or throughout the whole earth, 
Now, that doesn't mean that God's eyeballs are all running around. That's literal. You know who one of those eyeballs are? Who reports to God? Satan does. Job chapter 1, Job chapter 2. The angels report. God sees himself. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 3. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil and the good. Proverbs 15, 4. Excuse me. To show himself strong in behalf of those whose heart is perfect towards him. Ooh, Hananiah. You bound kicked the guy, the king. You know you just told the king? He says, your heart ain't perfect. You have bound gone sin, brother. You are in trouble. Herein thou hast done foolishly. Look at that. He calls him a fool. He's talking to the king. Well, he's talking rightfully to the king by the Lord and by the words of the Lord. He ain't doing it to be, you know, somebody important. He ain't doing it to, to be a rebel. He's doing it because of the word of God. Had I, would he ever meet President Obama personally? I would not go up to him and say, you're a fool and your heart ain't perfect. I would deal something kindly with the scriptures and all that. And I would let the Holy Spirit speak out of my mouth. And definitely out of the book of the Bible. I wouldn't call him any of these other, what I hear these other people would call him and all that. Because had I act like a, like a fool myself, God would not open up any doors for anybody else and such. Hananiah is speaking the word of God. And he's speaking re respectfully like Nathan did. Now, I keep bringing up Nathan because we know David gets right. David listens to Nathan. David repents to the Lord. David's heart really is sore. It is sorrowful. And he realized he sinned against God, not Bathsheba, not Uriah. He has sinned against God. And oh, if Asa would have done it so, but Asa does not. Asa is a picture of a man that hears a preacher. He gets the, the fire preached out of him. He gets sin put right down in his lap. It is named right in his face. Just like David. David got right. Asa is the same way. And look at the re other response. You get two responses in the Bible. You get one where the heart is broken and contrite. You get Asa. Then Asa was wroth with the seer. There is no repenting. Remember all the glorious things we've been reading about Asa? I've been putting Asa up on high. All oh, the marvelous things. He had a revival. He put all the things away. He took his, his, his own mother and threw her away because she had made an idol. She, he'd done all the things. He was on fire with the Lord. He, the Lord took all this, this army and gave him a great victory. And now he's wroth with the preacher. Don't you dare ever think that this will never happen to you. Had you had Hananiah gone up in chapter 16, verse 1, gone to Asa and said, Asa, come here for a minute. Yes. Do you know that you're going to rely on a, on a worldly man? God's going to be angry with you. You're going to be, <coughs> excuse me, you're going to be mad at me. And God's going to turn your whole life upside down. You think Asa would have believed that? No. And it don't happen just like that. The devil is so slick, he knows. He does it within time. Between chapter 15, verse 19, and then uh, chapter 16, verse 1, look, it says, There was no war unto the fifth and thirtieth year of the reign of Asa, and the sixth and thirtieth year of the reign of Asa. Within one year, one year, Asa's heart is turned away from God. We read a great Bible in verse 15, uh, chapter 15, and we're now at 16, and now he's mad at the preacher. God has forsaken him. One year. This is May 12, 2013. If the Lord tarries, where will you be May 12, 2014? What, what are you going to say? 
What will the devil put in your life in one year? What will God put you in, in your life in one year? 365 days. Will you be on fire with the Lord on May 12, 2014 more than you were right now? Or will you be a failure? Will you be, a, and Demas has forsaken me, going back to Thessalonica. You got to live for Christ today. You got to stay strong today. You cannot say, I'm not going to read my Bible today. You cannot say, I'm not going to pray today. You cannot say, that if today's church day, Sunday, I'm not going to go to church today. I used to tell the men in prison, I tried in my own personal life, even being sick, I tried never to go more than three days without reading the Bible. And if I was so sick, if I had just read one chapter, at least I read something, even being sick, I tried not to go three days without reading the Bible. Because three days would be four. How time, how, I mean, you kids over there, you don't realize we're talking about today in church. How quick time goes by. How many quick to say, well, I just don't read today. Next thing you know, oh, I haven't read all week. Oh, I didn't read all month. How quick time goes. And in 365 days, look where Asa is. Well, 300, Jewish 30 times 12. I'll leave that up to you. And Asa was wroth with the seer and put him in prison house. He put the preacher in jail. For he was enraged with him because of this thing. Of what thing? Of what God told him to say? Would you have believed from chapter 15 to now, chapter 16, would you have ever believed that Asa would put the preacher in jail and he was angry with the message of God? I'm asking you, where will you be next year at this time if the Lord tarries? For the next 365 days, you better stay in the Word. You better stay in prayer. And you better stay in fellowship with God. Because you don't know what's going to happen. You better have that God that's in fellowship with you. When you can reach out and say, Lord, and know how to pray. And know your prayers get answered, at least heard. There hasn't been no prayer in, this, in chapter 16 at all. And Asa oppressed some of the people at the same time. Look at that now. Now he's turned on the people. What did they do wrong? Remember Solomon? He hires all these people. They're, build, they're building the temple. He marries all these wives. He starts building all these these things for the gods and all that. And next thing you know, everybody's under taxation. Everybody's under workloads. And they come when his son is there, please lighten the thing up. How do you know when a church is going bad? When they start oppressing the people. You guys don't go out visitation as much as you do. You don't do things as much as you do. Go out and do this. Go out and do that. Go out and do this. Do this. Do that. Do this. Do that. And they didn't do nothing wrong. You start making your family do things that, you know what, 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 what's their problem? You're the problem, not your family. The next thing you know, you, you got your family not going to church and not doing nothing right because of you. You start giving them a hard time. And make it worse, you may you put booze and drugs and other stuff in there. He starts oppressing the people. Why? Because he's out of fellowship with God. He's not doing right. He's not happy. He has no more rest. He has no more peace. The preacher bowled him out. He's not in church no more. 365 days from victory. 365 days from rest. 365 days from peace. And it keeps going down more.
And behold, the acts of Asa, first and last, lo, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. Now we're going to get something that's not listed in the in the in the kings about Asa. You got to read the entire Bible together to get the full story of Asa. If you go back to First uh, Kings fifteen, I mean he gets his and he dies. But well, watch here. By the way, the acts are being recorded first and last. Yeah, I was this wonderful Christian back then. Everything's recorded. And if you're a sorry slut that doesn't do nothing for Jesus Christ, today, it's still recorded. But the things you're doing today are recorded too. You behold the acts of Asa, first and last, they are written in the, in the book of Kings and Judah and Israel. So you got to read Kings and, and Chronicles together to get the story. And Asa in the 39th and ninth year of his reign, so three more years now since verse 1. Three years has gone by. Is he still with, is he gotten right? Is he done what the Lord told him to do? And Asa in the 39th and ninth year of his reign was diseased in his feet. He had a problem with his feet. I've had problems with my feet. I've been told by a doctor twice, amputation. One amputation was a mistake, but they were going to amputate my toe, but they took the bone out. I had another doctor tell me when my other foot was acting up, if it don't get healed, it will be amputated. Thank God it got healed. You know why? Because I sought the Lord. I, I prayed about it. I got other people to pray about it. I was in fellowship with God. Had I not been in fellowship with God, had I not done what God told me, had I not been in the Word, had I not prayed, had I not gone to church, my story could have been like Asa's. But I thank God my story turned out good with the Lord. Even if God were to take my feet or my foot, if I still say still faithful to God, I've done a lot better than Asa did. Three years. It was disease in his feet until his disease was extremely great. It started off with a disease and it got worse and it got worse. It did not get better. Why didn't it get better? He didn't seek the Lord. Do you think just seeking the Lord will get you better? Not always. People are dying of cancer. And they're Christians. But they have no peace. They have no rest. There are Christians today that are, that are going to die of cancer. And God has given them peace. And God has given them rest. They might be in a lot of pain. But still they got God on their side. Even though God may not get rid of it. We're all going to die. The last time we read about Asa, he was angry with the preacher. Three years later, until his disease was exceedingly great. Now watch this. Yet in his disease, he sought not to the Lord. God was even on his mind. But to the physicians. Now Jesus said, I, I'm not going to quote this rightly completely. But he says, they that are whole need not a physician, but they that are set. Luke wrote that, the physician. He said, well, Jesus said, i I, I got to go to the doctors. Yeah, but what we read scripture with scripture with 2 Chronicles 16, don't rely on the doctors. When you think there's something wrong with your body, what's the first thing you need to do? You need to pray to the Lord. You need to ask God for healing. You need to ask God, God, is this a thing for a doctor? God, is this going to take time? God, what do you want me to do with this disease, whatever this thing is? And it's not the thing to go turn around and go on the opposite side of the scale. The one that well, I don't ever go to doctors. Because this verse says he relied on the doctors and not the Lord. So I'm never going to go. That, that's just as foolish. 
There are people today in this country who have given us a bad name because they won't let their children go to a facility to get treated. They won't let their children get shots like they should get. And then they got to get the courts to step in and the family agencies. And listen, the Bible doesn't say not go to a doctor. And yet the Bible doesn't say go straightly to a doctor. The Bible says, number five, go to the Lord and then go to a doctor. There was a time when Christian missionaries, when they went out into the foreign field, you know the first thing they do, they go out there with the gospel. You know the next thing they would do, they would build hospitals and they would build uh, clinics for them to be healed and be res reserve of pain. The Bible doesn't tell you not go to a doctor. But yet the Bible tells you don't put your faith in the doctor. Asa did not seek the Lord at all. Now here's a guy that walked with God. Here's a guy that talked with God. Here's a guy that had a revival. Here's a guy that called out in a wartime and God blessed him. What would make him so that he would not seek God when his feet are diseased? They're probably in pain. I don't know. Maybe they're oozing. I don't know what the story is. But the fact is they're getting worse, the Bible says. And yet he doesn't call on God because he's mad at the preacher. He got so into himself, he got so worldly, he got bitter because God rebuked him. And he never got right. The danger of getting out of your Bible, the danger of getting out of reading, the danger of getting out of the church is in three years, you may have problems and you will not call on the Lord to help you. That's how far you may get away from the Lord. And when God does send somebody in verse 7, you're going to resent it. I have dealt with people. I have come across people, well, I used to go to church, but, you know, don't go again. No, I'm not ever going to go back. And whatever the excuse, they don't even have to be angry. They don't even have to be angry enough to put the preacher in. It's just, I'm not going to go back ever again. I know somebody who got out of church because the woman in that church told her she was raising her children wrong. She left the church. Never been back. And you look at her children today, there's not one child that's living for the Lord. Two of her grandchildren, supposedly saved, one of them. That's between the Lord and the devil. Not living like the Lord. One of her grandchildren is on fire for the Lord and doing right. She's had eight children. At least eight of, eight of her children had at least two children. And that of the, the grandchildren and all that. She was in a she was in a Bible believing church. She got bitter because someone tried to help her out. It wasn't even the preacher, and they were right. You take eight children with a minimum of two two children from from, the, from those children, and how many there are? And one is definitely on fire in the Lord, and one is an empty. Who would have known if she, if she said, Lord, you know, what about this situation? Uh, is it true? Is it right? What do I need to do? Who knows what would have happened? But I'll tell you right now, that family life is messed up. I can't even tell you the sins that are involved. But it's gross. He doesn't even call on the Lord. Sought not to the Lord. I'm a Christian today. I read my Bible. I pray. I go to church. I get a little rash on my chest and with a sore. I say, Lord, I'm not in pain, but it don't look good. Help me. When I was in the hospital for my foot, Lord, I, you know, if it's your will, I lose my I lose my foot, but I don't really want to part with my foot. 
If you can help. Lord, this cut doesn't look very good. Uh, can you? And then what about for others? When someone you love is in pain, a lot of pain, you think Asa sought the Lord? I don't think so. If he didn't seek the Lord for himself. You imagine Asa, who was right in the Lord, who did everything the Lord wanted to. Imagine a night he's just laying on his bed and he's not thinking about no one in prayer. Sometimes I just lay there and my, uh, I can't sleep. I, I start praying for people. I, I pray for myself. I pray for Tracy. I pray for you kids. I pray for others. How do you have a life without God? Don't find out 365 days from today. Don't find out. Today, get in the Word. If the Lord tarries and you're living tomorrow, be in the Word tomorrow. Don't ever forsake the Word. And don't read your Bible like a marathon. Well, i got to read it. And I, listen, I was like that too. I've got to read it all, all the way through. Listen, if you can only read one chapter that day, that's one chapter that, you know, listen, that's better than no chapters. Things happen. Things come up. When you're lying in a hospital bed and, you know, they're coming in and getting blood, and I, I mean, you have a very hard time to read. But if you can get one chapter, you come home and the other thing, you know, the car breaks down, you got all this stuff. It's hard to read the Bible. Things happen. You can't always read three chapters a day. I learned that. I try to when we do our family Bible. I know Saturdays are completely out for reading the Bible. So either we make up Friday or we make up on Sunday the, the time that we don't do. And Asa slept with his fathers and died in the one and fortieth year of his reign. The thirty ninth year he got the disease, the fortieth one year of the reign. He lived two years with his, with his feet disease. Now, with the Bible that we know, I think God used his foot disease to try to get Asa back. I think he was correcting him. I think he was chastising him. I think the loving God, yes, used the rod on Asa. I believe that. I believe God did it for two years, and God says, you know what? He's not going to get right. Got to take him home. And in the Old Testament, I don't know if you can say you take him home. As far as the Old Testament, I cannot give you surety if you're going to see Asa in heaven. Probably what I know from the Old Testament and the law, I would say 50% no, you won't. You mean a guy that did everything? He did everything right? In the Old Testament, he could die like he did and still go to hell. Thank God for this side of Calvary. Thank God for mercy and grace. And thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ, which cleanses us from all sins. Thank you for eternal security. That these things are written that you may know you have eternal life. Asa did not know that. Why? Between... 15, 19, 16, 1. 365 days. 365 days. Asa turns out to be diseased. Two years with, with a disease that got worse. And he dies. And they buried him in his own sepulcher. Up to now, they've been burying him with David. He gets his own place. Must have been something. 
which he had made for himself in the city of David. He didn't even want to be acknowledged with David and his fathers. Now, I don't know. I can't read into this. But let me give you my personal opinion, and you can throw this in the garbage can. You don't have to take this. This is my opinion. I think maybe he got so mad at God, he didn't want to have anything to do with David and Solomon and all that. But that's my own personal opinion. I can't bank on that. But he did build his own sepulcher, at least in the city of David, and laid him in a bed which was filled with sweet odors and divers kind of spices prepared by the apothecary's art. And they made a very great burning for him. And that closes out a man that had a great victory, had a great revival. You know what happened to the great revivals in America? They died out. And look where we are today. But we're going to see another revival come up in the next chapter. And we're going to see the devil come up and attack that one. But 365 days, look where Asa's life went. Close there.